welcome back to my channel for a video I've been wanting to film for a while now because it is something that just lights my soul on fire and that is solo travel. I'm going to be giving you the things I've learned and kind of just my tips to feel a little safer and to just enjoy yourself a little bit more in case you are considering solo travel and maybe haven't before. Solo travel is something I really got into probably around the age of 24 or five. And I was just going through a big transition in life and wanted to kind of feel like I was doing something for myself. It felt so freeing to go on a trip alone. I'm the type of person that loves spending time with other people, but also just being able to plan as much or as little as I wanted and just totally change what my intentions were for the day based off of how I was feeling or what I was wanting to do was kind of life-changing. It is one of the most empowering things that I have done for myself. And if it's something that fits within your lifestyle, your budget, and something you're considering, I highly recommend it. But here are some tips that I would recommend, especially to solo female travelers. That is, that is a niche to where it is extra empowering and we should also just be aware of our surroundings and what we can do to feel safe. First thing that I normally like to do is try to stay in a hotel. We love an Airbnb, we, we love a Sonder, we love, you know, all the options that we have. But when you're traveling alone, having something that doesn't have an external door and like, you know, there's a lobby with a front desk or a bellman or whatever, and then you have to like scan your car to get up the elevator and there's a hallway. All of these things just make you feel extra safe. So staying in a hotel, a larger hotel, maybe with a couple floors, does help you feel like you have those extra layers of safety. It's kind of like living in an apartment versus a house. There's just a lot fewer ways that someone could get in. So highly recommend if it's your first trip and if that's something you're really aware of, then finding a hotel that feels a little bit larger to stay in. Next, I personally love solo traveling to smaller towns as opposed to larger cities, but something about visiting a smaller town like Kennebunkport, Maine, or like St. Michael's, Maryland, these, these smaller, more quaint areas just feels comforting for a lot of reasons. First off, there's easy parking. So if you're driving yourself, you can like park your car right where you're trying to go and you don't have to like walk a super far distance away from your car in order to get to dinner, whatever that might be. I feel like on average, they are a lot safer and you can kind of let your guard down a little bit. There's also often a lot of like nature focused things around smaller towns, whether that's a lake or a body of water or beautiful parks or whatever that might be. I personally have enjoyed those trips the most, but that's a preference. I do think that there's a safety aspect there, but at the end of the day, that is a preference. <laughs> this sounds really silly, but another way that I normally find a hotel that I wanna stay in is I search for coffee shops and restaurants that kind of fit my vibe. But a lot of times I literally just go to Apple Maps and I like walk through the maps with my fingers and I will notice the name of different restaurants, different coffee shops, and then I'll click on them and I'll look at the pictures of the restaurants and coffee shops in that area. You can tell a lot about how a restaurant is going to be kind of based off the name. And same with hotels. Different hotels, different names have just different vibes than aesthetics. I'm gonna try not say vibes too many times. That is oftentimes when people are like, how did you find this hotel? How did you find this area? I just walk around virtually on Apple Maps and start clicking on things until there's a cluster of things that feel, feel exciting. And a lot of the judgment is like judging a book by its cover, reading through the names of things nearby. That's how I found some things that I never would have otherwise found by just like Googling or searching Instagram or TikTok or whatever. This is, very important for safety. Um, if you have an iPhone or any sort of smartphone, sharing your location with family or friends, maybe a significant other, parents, sibling, whatever that might be, just so they can kind of like keep tabs on you. So if anything does happen, if you get lost, I don't know, it's just an extra layer of safety for them to be able to see your last location, kind of keep an eye on you. And I'm sure that also gives them peace of mind to see your dot at a cute coffee shop in the middle of a cute town, you know? Instead of being like, oh, she's taking her first solo trip. I wonder how it's going. I wonder where she is. <laughs> Another safety thing that I recommend is retroactively posting on social media. I honestly don't think you have to have a following or be an influencer to be aware of this. I do think it's just safe and smart to do. But whenever I'm traveling solo, I'll take photos and videos on my phone all day but I won't post it until I've left that location or sometimes not even until later that night because I don't want people to kind of like 
trace my steps of where I've been. So likely where I'm going or the area that I've been in. Um, and I do, like I said, think it helps you really live in the moment to not be posting as you go. I know this is such a 2024 problem and thing to say, but um, it's also nice to that later that night kind of recount everything you did that day, look through your photos and videos, throw some up on the gram, make a little TikTok, do what you want. This is what my father would tell me to tell y'all. It's something that I need to be better about, but having some sort of like protective thing with you, I know this seems like common sense, but it might not be a bad idea, whether that's like pepper spray or a taser, just to feel like you have something to kind of fend for yourself if anything goes wrong. I think that that is a great idea. Throw it on your keychain, throw it in your fanny pack. I also totally recommend fanny packs for solo traveling. You can have everything right there, hands-free, not like set down your purse or your bag or leave it behind, not be having to juggle extra things. I actually normally bring a tote bag when I travel only because I also have all of my filming equipment, my vlog camera, everything in that. But if I am ever not filming, which is rare, fanny pack all the way, throw a little pepper spray in there, have it in your hand if you're walking around at night somewhere. It doesn't hurt. It's always good to be extra precautious. Let's talk about getting your cute photos and videos alone though. Of course, there's selfie sticks, there's phone tripods, but honestly what I have found just recently to be the most helpful thing for getting content alone or just even taking a cute selfie to send to your mom or one of these little guys. I'm sure you've seen them, Octo Buddies. They stick to like everything. I bet they'll, I bet it'll stick to my Stanley. They'll stick to everything. You can put it on a window, you could put it on a slicker wall, on anything metal, if that's a crosswalk sign. You will start to see the world in a different light when you're like, oh, my phone can stick to this, 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 this. Stick it up, walk away, get a little video, get a little um, selfie. Also, side tip, the best way to get photos by yourself or like if you're posing with your boyfriend or your husband or some girlfriends, whatever, is to actually set up your phone somewhere run a video, run a video, get together, pose a few times, do a couple little different cute things, and then go back and screenshot it later. It's like all the perks of a timer cam without having to be like five, four, everybody hurry, three. Um, and that's how I get pretty much all of my photos and videos alone is setting up my phone, running a video and screenshotting it later. I highly recommend giving yourself permission to just make the calls as you go. If there's something you really wanna see, like say, for example, I went to Maryland and one thing I really wanted to do was go sailing on a sailboat. That required a reservation, that required some planning, I booked that in advance. But otherwise, I just kind of fly by the seat of my pants because it is so fun to be there, to exist, to stumble upon gyms on your own, that like feeling of like finding something and discovering something instead of having expectations that you've built up and then you go to it and maybe it lets you down. Having no expectations and then just being present and exploring is such a unique feeling that I feel like we don't get anymore in this modern day age of just technology and guides and research and Google and Instagram photos and all that sort of thing. As I said, I started solo traveling for myself as a way to just really explore those new parts of me, not being so type A, not being so planned, not being such a people pleaser, and then just being a little more free. But I would vlog it because that's my job. And I would get comments all the time being like, it's super disappointing that you didn't research, that you didn't know that you should do this, this, and this, that you didn't talk about the history of this, that you didn't blah, 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 blah. And I always was like, well, I mean, I get it. If I was making like a travel guide of 10 best things to do in Charleston, that would be different. But I'm not, I'm doing this for me. And the, the feeling of the freedom of just seeing where the wind takes you was a feeling that I had never experienced in my 25 years until allowing myself to do that on a solo trip. And it's almost this like dopamine, like high that I can't, I've never experienced it any other time. A feeling of, of pure freedom and almost like a childlike wonder of, I don't know what today's gonna hold, but I'm just gonna see. Let yourself make the call as you go. That's kind of the beauty of it, at least in my opinion. Let's talk about solo dining. My favorite thing to do is Try new restaurants, try new cuisines, eat new foods. Like that is where pretty much all of my expendable income goes these days, it feels like. And I love solo dining, but that's probably the most frequently asked question I get is how do you make that not so awkward? I just feel embarrassed sitting alone. I feel like people think I was stood up by a date. I feel people have all of these narratives that they create in their own head, which I get it. So if you feel uncomfortable solo dining, first I say try it once. It's also very empowering. You can talk to the server, you can people watch, you can lip read. Oh, it's so fun. But 
I totally respect if it makes you feel uncomfortable. A few things you could do. One, sit at the bar. I feel like a lot of people travel for work, sit at the bar, sit alone. And it's just kind of understood that like that is normal and cool and people gotta eat. People gotta travel for work, people gotta eat. So it's super common. Two, bring a book. Nothing makes you look like more of a mysterious, smart, introspective person than like sitting alone reading a book at a restaurant. Or third, as a way to just ease into it, find a restaurant you really wanna to go to, pick up something to go, and then take it somewhere so scenic. One of my favorite memories in Maine when I solo traveled is I first dined solo at this restaurant, best lobster roll I've had in my life in Portland, Maine. It's called Eventide. It's a brown butter steamed bun lobster roll. They can make it gluten-free. I think about it every single day. I planned my whole honeymoon around going to get that lobster roll again. Anyways, I ate at that restaurant one night, loved the lobster roll so much that I went again. I picked it up to go. I took my car to the ocean on a rainy day, popped the trunk, sat in my trunk, watching the rain come down over the ocean, eating this hot lobster roll by myself. And that was like peak living, but you should try solo dining. It's really good for your confidence. Like it's such a confidence boost to be like, I'm choosing this. And I don't care if people look at me and wonder if I was stood up by a date. <laughs> Something I recommend is maybe don't go on too many hikes in the middle of nowhere, unless you've done a ton of research. I did some hikes in Washington when I stayed on a houseboat there solo, which was such a fun trip. Um, but I made sure to go to like very populated areas to where you, there's people around you all the time, very clear trails, you couldn't really get lost. But I wouldn't go anywhere too treacherous or too remote on a hike by myself, that's just me. Maybe maybe you feel very um, comfortable and confident doing that and I salute you. But if you're a nature-y kind of person and wanting to do a hike by yourself, I would definitely do some research and make sure that there's like clear cut trails, cell phone reception, people around just in case. I also think if you are booking an activity ahead of time or maybe just looking for things while you're there, doing an act a group activity with other strangers is actually so fun. Um, you can start to feel a little bit lonely if you're traveling solo for a super long time and just being able to talk to people beyond the server at the restaurant or the barista at the coffee shop for a while is a really great connection and it's really fun to meet people you otherwise wouldn't cross paths with, hear a little bit about their story, like thinking about the sailing that I did in Maryland. It was all older retired couples and me. And I actually love that. I loved getting to hear about them and their retirement and what they love to do. And it was a really fun time, but that can look like a lot of things. That can look like a cooking class, um, maybe a museum tour where you all go with a tour guide and learn about the art. There's a lot of experiences now on Airbnb as well. You can kind of scroll through those and see what's there. And I think, um, I think you'll enjoy it. It's very fun. A few more safety things. I'm gonna tell you a little story time, not to scare you, but maybe to encourage you to just think about a backup device of some sort. I was at a lighthouse, kind of in the middle of nowhere, by myself on a solo trip, and had propped up my phone without an OctoBuddy, on a rock, actually, on the side of a cliff. Bad idea to get a photo of me in the lighthouse. Of course, of course, the phone fell down the cliff. I had to like scale down the side of this to try to find my phone. Found it, the screen was broken. I was like, bummer, oh well, it's okay. No, the phone would not turn on. Would not turn on, I was in the middle of nowhere in a rental car that didn't have navigation, didn't know where I was. I ended up finding some people, told them what happened. It was a group of two girls and a guy and I probably shouldn't have admitted, I'm traveling solo and I just, I just broke my phone, I need help. But I did, I told them that and they helped me look up where the nearest like phone store was. It was in a different state. <laughs> So I had to memorize the, the highways, the exit, how many miles down that exit. I know this is how the world used to be, but I was raised in technology. And so this felt like a huge feat to travel state lines to try to get a new phone. I only had to pull over once and I went into a Whole Foods and found some teenage girls to help me find my next little bit of driving um, to get a new phone. So since then, I've started to think, okay, what are backup ways that if something happens to my phone, I could still contact someone? look things up. I mean, maybe it would be getting a smartwatch of some sort. I now have um, a secondary device. Maybe it's you bring an iPad or a laptop or something with you and you leave it in the car. So at least you can go park near a Starbucks, get on their Wi-Fi, text someone from your computer, research something. But I do think having a backup device in these, this, this, this day and age where we rely so heavily on it to even get somewhere, we don't have maps in our cars anymore, you know, is very helpful. 
Something else I would highly recommend is choosing flight times around the check-in and check-out time of your hotel. First, I love to try to fly in when there's still daylight instead of too, too late so that you can comfortably get from the airport to your hotel. Just like learn your surroundings, kind of know what is where, get checked in, feel safe. Um, but also maybe, maybe more importantly, nothing is worse than having an 11 a.m. checkout at a hotel and then like a 9 p.m. flight and feeling like, okay, what am I gonna do with my suitcases? Like feeling like you don't have a home base for that long is a different type of challenge. So I've done that a few times. It's been a lot of coordinating and trying to figure out handling things. So what I've done now is I try to normally fly in early afternoon, early evening while there's still sunlight. And I try to kind of fly out midday so that I don't have to, I don't have to do that. One last little tip that I would recommend in terms of car safety is one, if you can pick a car with Apple CarPlay, so helpful to be able to navigate. But I'm sure a lot of us have cars that when you get out of your car, it syncs with your phone, it tells you where your parked car is. When you're in a rental car, that probably won't happen. So if you're parking somewhere and like walking around town, exploring, or if parking is kind of far from dinner, I always like to open my maps and drop a pen where I've parked and then text it to myself. So that way I can quickly and easily navigate back to where my car is, not accidentally wonder and get lost, especially because if it's a rental car, I'm not a car person. I don't know if I got a Honda or, or a t Toyota or a, I don't know what my rental car is because I didn't notice. So having a pen dropped is very helpful and great for safety as well. Those are all of my best tips from personal experience of what I would recommend doing in terms of safety and also just maximum enjoyment. But I just want to encourage you that if it's something you've been interested in, do it. I've received a lot of DMs of people saying, I was inspired by your solo travel. I thought I'd never be the type to do it, but I did it and it changed my brain. Like it changed the way I see myself. It changed my capacity of like just what I think I'm capable of and it changed my confidence. And that is so rewarding. I love it so much. I love y'all. I hope you have the best solo travel adventures. Thanks for hanging out with me and I will see you in a video very soon.